Hi folks, and welcome back to another Make It video. If you've been watching the channel for a while, there's a good chance you'll have seen me use my ammo can wood stove in videos. Uh, I made it out of a 50 caliber military ammunition can, and I get asked a lot of questions about it in the comments. So I thought I would build another one and make a video, and hopefully it'll answer some of your questions. So here it is. It's quite small, but perfectly adequate for heating a small tent. I use it in my Polish Army Lavu tent, and it is more than capable of heating that up when it's very cold. Um, so anything of a sort of similar size or even a bit bigger and it will be absolutely fine. The stove sits on three legs which fold up for transport and storage and the legs when folded out are splayed. Um, a lot of people have asked why I chose to use three legs and isn't it unstable? Doesn't it topple over? Well no it doesn't. It's very stable. Because of the angle that the legs are set at when it's folded out um, it gives it a really wide stance, so it makes it very stable. The stance is much wider than the stove body itself. The legs on the original one were held in place with these cotter pins, which I kind of regret using now. Um, they're a bit of a fiddle to, to get them in and out of the holes. So the new one I'm going to make is going to have an improvement on that, which will make it a lot easier to fold the legs out and to close them away again. On the front of the stove, there's a simple hinged door with a latch, and the door incorporates an adjustable air vent. The stovepipe on the original stove was made using 2-inch stainless steel tubing, and it was sectional so it comes apart and all stores inside the stove. I'm also going to incorporate an adjustable damper to regulate the draw going up the stovepipe, and uh, therefore I should be able to shut it down and control the burn a bit better, so I'll get, get a longer burn between fills. Inside the stove, down at the bottom, is a grate, and that's just there to make sure that the fire gets enough airflow. At the top of the stove, just below the stove pipe, is a baffle to keep the fire in the firebox for a bit longer. The fire has to work a bit harder to find its way out before it rushes up and out through the stove pipe. Right, well that's the old stove. Let's get started on the new one. Things I'm gonna need. 150 caliber ammunition can, some scrap sheet metal, three old tent poles, car exhaust repair sections, one car exhaust coupler repair section, a piece of expanded steel grill, this is a three inch butt hinge, a load of pot rivets and some nuts, bolts and washers. And to replace the cotter pins, which I used in the old stove to hold the legs in place, I'm going to be using these spring clips. And finally, you're going to need some paint to make it look nice and to protect the bare metal from rusting. Choose a high temperature paint or a stove paint, something that is going to withstand the heat that that thing is going to produce. The tools I'm going to be using, a hammer, a couple of old chisels, and I stress old chisels. You're going to be using them on metal, so uh, they don't want to be you know, your very best, finest woodworking chisels. Um, a craft knife and a pair of pliers. Needle nose pliers are best. I'm also going to be using a pop riveter because this is a no weld version. I'm going to be bolting and pop riveting everything together. Power tools, I've got a cordless drill which will be used for drilling holes and for cleaning up the metal. I'll be using an angle grinder and various abrasive discs and wheels for cleaning up the metal. And I'll be using a jigsaw with a hacksaw blade in it. You could feasibly do all this with hand tools. It'll obviously just take a lot longer and it'll be harder work. You know, cutting metal is hard work. Um, but you know, where I'm using jigsaws with metal cutting blades, you could use a coping saw with a metal cutting blade or a hacksaw. Um, you know, where I'm using a drill, you could, you could drill by hand. Um, but yeah, it's just obviously gonna take more time and effort. This handle, that's gotta go. And inside the lid is a rubber gasket, which was originally used to keep the ammunition that was stored in this dry. That's got to come out because obviously rubber melts. And then I need to clean it up and get all the paint off it. I'm not worried about the inside because that will all burn off on its first burn. To remove this, rubber gasket which runs around the inside of the lid here. I find the best thing to use is a, a craft knife and if you go into the corner you can cut through the rubber and then using a pair of pliers you can grip it by digging underneath, grab it and then you should just be able to pull it up and away. To clean up the ammo stove and get all this paint and any stickers and stuff that might be on there, I'm going to use a range of different 
abrasive wheels that fit in a drill. So I've got this kind here, which just has, it's basically like a wire brush. I find these are really good. They're designed to work in an angle grinder. It's called a knot wheel, and it's a, a much stiffer gauge of wire, and they're twisted around, so you've got a whole load of kind of like twisted bits, and they tend not to bend over, and they're much more abrasive. But obviously you're gonna be using them in an angle grinder. Um, you know, these things are dangerous tools, if not used carefully. They spin much faster um, and you do have to be very careful. Always wear eye protection when you're doing this because these little pieces of metal here do tend to come, up, come away and come off. And obviously, especially in an angle grinder, they're gonna come off at speed. side where the hinge is, there's going to be a large hole. This is going to be your main feed hole for putting wood into the into the wood stove and that'll have a door on it. So I'm going to deal with that one first. I found that the lid off a Trangia kettle is about right. If you've got a 10 centimeter Zebra Billy can, you know, you could draw around that. Um, yeah, just measure it, find something that works. The next hole is going to go at the back of the stove on the top and that's going to be for the stove pipe and that's going to be on what was originally the front of the ammo can where the latch is, the opposite end to your feed hole. I'm going to be using one of these for the sort of stove pipe spigot. This is an exhaust repair section. You can buy these and they come in two parts with uh, a couple of bolts and springs. And these are designed as a weld-on replacement connector for exhaust pipe sections. It comes in two parts. One part is a sort of pressed shape, which doesn't look very neat. And um, it's got an awkward uh, sort of flange here. I did originally plan on using this section because it's lighter, but when it arrived and having looked at the shape of it, I've decided not to use that bit, but to use this section instead, which is heavier because it's got this big bit of plate steel welded on and this thing which was originally like a gas a gas tight seal for where the two join together where well, you don't need that all you're going to need is this part and that will go on the back of the stove just here sticking up so you've got somewhere to mount your um your stove pipe The next thing I'm going to do is to make up these brackets which hold the legs that they fold within. There's three of them. One of them is straight, the front one here is square. The ones at the back are splayed. These are going to be my brackets. These two, the splayed rear ones, which is why they're a slightly different length. These measure 65 millimeters by 110 millimeters. And the front one doesn't need to be as wide because it's not on the angle. That's 100 millimeters by 65. I'm also just going to cut the corners off these. Uh, now, while this is still flat, it's a lot harder to do once it's folded. And this measures 10 millimeters along here by 30 millimeters along here. Just take that corner off. For a 
former. I'm using this piece of MDF here. This is 18 millimeters thick and the legs I'm using are 16 millimeters thick. So that will leave space for a washer between the legs and the bracket, if you see what I mean, just for a little one mil washer. And that should work out well. The rear leg support brackets are slightly more complicated because they're splayed. So the centre line here is actually off centre. If you measure from one side, um, 50 millimetres in, and take that as your centre line and then go 9 mil either side to give you your 18 mil space, or whatever the thickness of your legs is. And also these are handed, so the left hand side one needs to be the mirror image of the right hand side one, not the same as, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to use the same piece of MDF as my former for the rear legs. Um, the only difference is that along one edge here, I've cut that at a 15 degree angle. And that bracket will fix onto the back of the stove here, creating the splay for the rear legs. For the holes on the brackets, I've taken a couple of measurements and marked out the position of my holes. Uh, this line here that runs down here, that is a center line for the hole that's going to act as the hinge, if you like. So there'll be a bolt going through this hole and that will hold the leg in place and allow it to hinge. Um, and that hole there is 19 millimeters from this flat edge and 14 millimeters from this edge here. This second line here, that's seven millimeters over from the original and that's going to be a center line for the pin which holds the leg in position. So it's going to have a pin that locks it in position either open or closed. So there'll be a hole there for the little spring pin to come through. The distance from the center of the bolt to the center of the pin hole is 20 millimeters. And you've got to make sure, it's really important, that that is 20 millimeters from there to there and from there to there. Otherwise your pin won't locate in the holes. Once you've got everything marked out and you're happy with it, it's a good idea to use a center punch um, just to make a dent where your hole is going to go. It stops the drill bit from skipping around on the surface of the metal. Um, you know, just make sure it bites in the right place. On there. On there. I'm going to use my drill press to drill these holes. I know I didn't mention it at the beginning when I was talking about tools, but I have this in my workshop, so it's going to make life a little bit easier. But you can do this with a hand drill, um, you know, or a cordless drill. It's no, no problem. For the legs, I'm going to be recycling these old tent poles here. They're quite a thin gauge, about 16 millimeters in diameter, so they should be ideal. And I need to cut those down to 250 millimeters in length. Next on the agenda is to make the door. There are quite a few components to this. There's the door itself, there's a hinge, there's the adjustable air vent, there's the latch, and then there's a strike plate for the latch as well so that it fastens in position. So for the door, I've measured a rectangle that measures 130 millimeters along here by 115 along here, and that's the right size just to fit in this 
section here below that welded on hinge. But I want the latch side of the door to be curved like this. I just think it looks nicer. I'm just gonna draw around the insert from my 12 centimeter Zebra Billy tin. Just happens to be exactly the right size. And that'll give me the curve I need. For the vent, I'm just gonna draw around a coffee can to give me the size I want. It's about just over 70 millimeters, 72 millimeters or something. But I also need to have a little lobe sticking out, which I'm gonna bend up to give me a handle that I can turn the thing with. The next thing I'm gonna make is the damper. It's gonna fit inside this part here, which is the bit that comes out from the top of the stove. And it's literally just a disc um, with a rod which goes through it, which is attached. And the disc can open and close. So you can adjust the drawer up the, uh, up the stove pipe by closing it that way and reducing the amount of drawer or opening right up to increase the drawer. This is a Bricklayer's brick tie. Um, it's stainless steel and it's perfect for this. This is gonna kind of become the key to operate that little damper, that little butterfly. Now, this is ideal for several reasons. Firstly, it's got already a little handle kind of formed at one end, but it's also got this little zigzag bit here. And I'm gonna make use of that. I'm actually gonna bend those a little bit more to accentuate them. And they are gonna hold that butterfly in place. So when they're a bit more of a zigzag, if you see what I mean, they're gonna press against this butterfly. So when you turn the key, it turns the damper inside the stovepipe. So that's working well, but the only problem is it doesn't want to stay in the open position because obviously there's weight on the handle and it just wants to close whichever way you put it. So to stop that happening, I'm going to put a spring on this side here, held in place with one of those retaining star washers. 
and um, that should just put some pressure against the side of that and just hold it in whatever position you put it on through the strength of the spring. I'm going to put a washer on first in the spring and another washer and a smaller washer <laughs> and this is that retaining washer it's got a, a sort of slot cut into it and as you push it on those um, those kind of corners grip on the rod on the bit of brick tie and stop it coming back off again so sort of hold it tight when I put the first section of stove pipe on I just have to make sure I pull that washer out so that the slot on the stove pipe can slide down and then that will hold it all in place just two more components to make one of them is just a rectangle of steel to act as that um, as that baffle just there and the other thing I need to do is cut a bit of this grid here to go in the bottom of the stove this is an expanded steel mesh it's just the job for this really it allows plenty of airflow but keeps the wood as it's burning up off the bottom of the stove Okay, that's all the components ready to assemble. We've got the main body of the stove here with the holes for the door and for the stove pipe all cleaned up. We've got the first section of flue with the little damper in there. We've got door components, so that's the door itself and the hinge. We've got the rotating air vent. We've got a latch and a catch. We've got the bits that go inside, so that's the baffle plate and the grill for the bottom. We've got the legs and the leg brackets, and then we've got flue pipe sections here, which are 250 millimeter long exhaust repair sections. So finally, it's time to put it all together.
is as far as I'm going to assemble it until I've painted it. I'm not going to put these two parts on until it's been painted, otherwise when you turn the vent you're going to see bare bits of metal where the paint has missed because that's been on there, likewise with the latch. So I'm going to paint those both sides, paint everything with high temperature paint. Um, I'm not going to paint the inside, there's no need, that's why I didn't even bother to take the original paint off, that'll all just burn off in its first use. On the damper assembly here, um, I'm not going to paint that, I'll mask all this off so I don't cover it in overspray and I'll just paint up to just above that weld. Until I make something better, I'm just going to use a bit of this gauze here from an old tea strainer as a spark arrester. And I'm literally just going to poke that in above the damper there, so the damper will still work and that will catch any sparks that try and fly up the flue. Well, I am really pleased with how this has turned out. There are some definite improvements on the last one. The legs are just much easier to use now. Those cotter pins were always a bit of a pain. They became harder and harder over time to locate into the, into the holes in the legs. This uh, damper here is gonna be really good at regulating the, uh, the burn rate. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. Yeah, all good. So hopefully this will answer some questions. I get a lot of questions about the stove, the original one that I made. Um, whenever I release a video with it in, you know, people want to know about it, understandably. So um, hopefully, you know, this will answer some questions and maybe you could have a go at making one yourself. You really don't need a lot of specialist tools to make this stove. Um, you know, I used the tools I had because I had them, um, but you could make it using hand tools. It would just you know, just take a bit longer really, but um, you could certainly do it. Cost wise, I'd say it's cost somewhere between 50 and 60 pounds to make this stove the way I've done it. You could save money by welding. Um, if you know anybody that welds or you weld yourself, you could weld up the little spigot that comes off the top of the stove that the stove pipe goes into, and you could probably weld up the stove pipe yourself as well. That would save certainly a bit of money because they were the most expensive parts. The ammo can itself isn't expensive. I paid 12 pounds for mine. Uh, and you can usually pick them up between sort of 10 and 15 pounds depending on where you get them from. Recycling materials and using scrap metal to make the components for your stove is going to keep the cost down too. You know I used those tent poles which were from a tent that was no longer serviceable and I had some bits of scrap steel to make the door and all the other bits and pieces so yeah if you've got anything lying around use that. Right well I'm going to go outside and fire this thing up, give it its first burn and I will use that as the closing shots of the video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.